What's up everyone and welcome to Rare Liquid Careers. Today is going to be a bit of a controversial video because I'm going to be ranking the top most common jobs in finance. Whether you're ranking something like the best movie ever or the best basketball player ever, things are always pretty subjective and everyone has different criteria and valid arguments. And so what I'm trying to say is that this video is just my own personal opinion. And there are really great things about every industry I'm going to cover. There's going to be pros and cons to each. And ultimately, what's really important is you figuring out what industry is the best fit for your personality and what you're looking for in terms of work-life balance and other things like that. And so please keep all of this in mind. I'm not trying to look down on any industries whatsoever. Now, there are so many things to consider when ranking different industries, but I focus just on three, which each will have a worth of five points each for a total of 15 points. First criteria is reputation, and this kind of just basically means prestige, but I don't like the word prestige, so I'm gonna use the word reputation. So reputation in the overall finance world, how do other people in finance view that particular industry? The second criteria is how difficult it is to break into that industry. And then the third criteria is compensation because obviously that's a huge factor when it comes to everyone choosing their jobs and especially in the finance world. Two really quick things before I get started. First, if you're new to the channel and don't really know my background, I used to work as an investment banking analyst at JP Morgan for a few years. And so that's really how I gathered all this industry information. I have a lot of friends who worked in a lot of the industries we're gonna cover today. And second, wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Wall Street Prep, for helping make this video possible. All right, now starting at number 10, we have private wealth management, which is an industry where you're helping wealthy individuals manage their investment portfolios. In wealth management, you're not doing a ton of fundamental research or stock picking or running crazy algorithms in order to make the best investments possible and just have like crazy returns. You're actually just usually investing in mutual funds or ETFs or bonds. And your goal is to just understand your client's risk tolerance and kind of figure out where they really want broad-based exposure. And ultimately the wealth management kind of industry becomes more of a sales job where you're just trying to maintain relationships and find new relationships with wealthy individual investors because the more money you're managing, the more fees you'll earn. Going into my criteria and the ratings, I would say that wealth management is not known to be a super, super reputable industry in the finance world. And that mainly has to do with how easy it is to break in. And as a case in point, I actually interned at Merrill Lynch as a private wealth management intern during my freshman summer. And it was pretty easy to get that job. Pretty much just had to submit my resume. And the last thing I'll mention is the compensation, which tends to be pretty low, something around 40 to 60K for entry level positions. But as I kind of alluded to earlier on, this position or this industry can also be pretty lucrative if you have like a really strong and large client base. And the hours are not that bad either. So this can be still a pretty solid job for a lot of people, especially as you grow more senior. Next up at number nine, I've lumped together three different fields, which are accounting, tax, and audit. And these are professional services offered and usually dominated by the big four, which are Deloitte, KPMG, PwC, and Ernst & Young. Each of these fields do have their stark differences in comparison to one another, but they are very similar in that they're each helping companies understand their financial situations. And you're spending a lot of time digging into financial statements and helping companies really understand and abide by financial laws and regulations. Going into the ratings, in terms of reputation, all three are kind of considered the same, and they're usually seen as stepping stones to other jobs in finance. It isn't super, super hard to get a job or break into any of these industries, and the compensation also tends to be a bit higher than private wealth management at something around 45 to 65K per year. And I would also say that there's a lot of job stability. So if you want to stay in that field, your pay actually increases a pretty solid amount over a span of 10 to 20 years. And so I would say that it is still a pretty solid industry for a lot of people. At number eight, we have commercial banking, and this is a job that entails selling credit products aka debt products to companies and these can include things like term loans revolving lines of credit and other fixed income securities ultimately your job is to provide financial advice to help your clients grow their businesses by funding things like buying new equipment or covering their working capital to fund their day-to-day -day operations when it comes to reputation, commercial banking is not seen as super, super reputable in the finance world. And I think that's mainly because you're really just selling very commoditized financial products to companies and you're just doing this over and over again. It's not super, super interesting work compared to the other industries later on in this list. Breaking into commercial banking is not really super, super hard, but it's also not super, super easy either because there are relatively less spots than in comparison to something like accounting, audit, or tax. And I would also say in terms of compensation, it's also notably a little bit better 
Uh, starting entry salaries are somewhere around 55k to 98k depending on the bank that you join. Next up at number seven, we have financial planning and analysis, also known as FPNA, and also treasury roles. And both of these roles are internal roles within a company where you're really just helping the company manage its finances. Many people in the finance roles that we covered previously in this video oftentimes enter into these FPNA or treasury roles. And that's because usually when you're on the client side, it's a little bit more like you're not really building anything and people are kind of crave wanting to build some kind of like business or product or just see something grow over time, right? And so that's why a lot of people exit into this industry. As a result, I would say that FPNA and treasury roles are a bit more reputable in the finance world overall, but of course it really will depend a lot on which company you join. Breaking into these internal finance roles can be a bit more challenging because usually companies hire more on a needs basis and there aren't these kinds of normal recruiting cycles with a ton of spots that are available as in the other industries that I mentioned earlier on in this video. Lastly, compensation is super, super variable, so I can't really give you a range. It's also very, very hit or miss depending on whether or not you earn stock options as part of your compensation, which if you're joining a really successful startup, then that compensation could really amount to a lot. Or if you join a startup that doesn't really amount to anything, then your stock options really aren't worth anything. Now, if you're interested in any of the fields that we discussed today, and you're just interested in a career in finance, one resource that I highly recommend is Wall Street Prep. Wall Street Prep offers a ton of different courses that can help you prepare for almost any finance interview. But the two I particularly recommend are the accounting course if you don't have any prior accounting knowledge and the premium modeling package, which goes over all the key valuation concepts I learned in banking like DCFs, comps, accretion dilution, and LBOs. Wall Street Prep has been around since 2004 and they train interns, new analysts, and employees at all of the top banks. And they also partner with the top institutions, including Wharton, which is where I'm currently getting my MBA. And they actually just sent me an email this past week saying that I have access to a bunch of Wall Street Prep materials if I want to learn more about modeling. If any of this sounds interesting to you, make sure to use my code RARELIQUID because that'll give you 20% off. I'll leave a link to Wall Street Prep down in my description below. Feel free to check them out if you're interested in a career in finance. All right, now going back to our rankings at number six on the list, we have three different investment banking divisions, which are sales and trading, equity research, and asset management. Going into each of these pretty quickly, in sales and trading on the sales side, you're encouraging institutional investors to purchase a wide variety of different financial securities. And then on the trading side, you're helping these clients execute on these trades by getting the best possible price. For equity research, your job entails doing a ton of fundamental research about companies and industries, and you create reports that you sell to other institutional investors. Lastly, in asset management, you're working with institutional investors to give them exposure to a wide variety of assets and help them reach their financial goals with their portfolios by understanding their risk tolerance. Going into the ratings, the reason these three fields are kind of grouped together is because they're all divisions within an investment bank and really they kind of have the same reputation. It really just depends more on what you prefer to work on. The difficulty in terms of getting into any of these fields are also very similar and there are very few spots for any of these industries within each of the top banks and compensation tends to be somewhere around 90k to 120k for entry level positions. Next up at number five we have corporate development and you can think of this as an internal mergers and acquisitions arms within a company so your job is to help your company grow through acquisitions. Corporate development usually is a career path that you join after investment banking. And so it's seen as pretty reputable, but people don't necessarily kind of just join corporate development because that's more reputable in a sense. It's usually because they get tired of banking and want to leave the kind of professional services industry and want to join something where they help building or helping a company grow. It's also pretty tough to join corporate development because you normally need a background in banking or maybe management consulting. And the pay is actually a lot less than banking. Usually you take a pretty big pay cut in order to join a corporate development team. And that's usually because your hours are a lot more chill. But as it is with other kind of internal roles at companies, if you do have stock options for a highly successful startup or a public company, then these can actually be worth a lot in the future. Next up at number four in the list, we have investment banking, which is a field in which you're helping clients with two types of transactions. The first are mergers and acquisitions, and the second are the raising of funds either through equity or debt transactions. If you want to learn more about investment banking, I do have a guide to the overall industry right here. And I also have a day in the life video right there. And so if you're interested in either, I'll leave links to both of these down in the description below. 
Now, when it comes to ratings, investment banking is viewed pretty favorably in the finance world because there are just so many exit opportunities that you can get after joining an investment bank. And people understand that you're willing to work or also able to work super, super long hours. And lastly, of course, the compensation is also super great. Banking is also one of the most competitive fields to get into. And also compensation, as I discussed earlier, is pretty strong with analysts typically earning anywhere from 140K to 200K in their first year and associates earning anywhere from 250 to 400K in their first year. If you're interested in recruiting for investment banking or just any field in finance in general, I am selling the resume and cover letter that got me into JP Morgan down in my description below at rareliquidcareers.com. I also have a guide that I created for just like an overall industry guide and i also am building out a how to get into investment banking course which you can sign up for down in the description as well i'm giving huge discounts to people who sign up early all right going back to our rankings we're finally down to our top three and i would say that these next three are pretty interchangeable with one another but i did force myself to rank them but if you join any of these fields they're kind of known as the holy grail of finance in general because they're all on the buy side and the buy side just means that you're making actual investments into companies aka that's why or that's why it's called the buy side and as i said you'll be super, you can be super successful in any of these three fields it's really more of a matter of what kind of work you're personally interested in with that said, at number three, we have venture capital. And this is an industry in which you're making minority investments in the earlier stages of companies and hoping that they eventually IPO or get acquired so you can make some insane returns. If you're interested in learning more about venture capital, feel free to check out this video right here, which goes over the entire industry and a deeper dive into what venture capital is all about. Venture capital is often seen as the sexiest of the three buy side roles. And that's usually just because you're working with the hottest companies in any given industry. And especially if you're working in tech, they're really on the bleeding edge of technology. But I will say that after speaking with a lot of people in VC and also in other buy side roles, the work is actually not as glamorous as it may seem on the outside. It is extremely hard to break into venture capital and you can only really break in if you have previous experience in investment banking, management consulting, startup experience, or if you're a founder yourself. And there are really, really few spots available for every single kind of venture capital team because the teams are super lean. Lastly, when it comes to compensation, venture capital usually pays the least of the three buy side roles. And oftentimes investment bankers actually get paid more than venture capital investors at the entry level positions. But I will say that over time, venture capital investors can earn a ton of money. You can become billionaires. And especially just if you're at a really top firm, your growth, your compensation growth just can grow exponentially. And so there's a ton of opportunity to just earn a ton in venture capital. It's just that in the earlier stages, you're typically not earning as much. Next up at number two on the list, we have private equity. And this is an industry in which you're purchasing 100% of a company and funding that purchase with a lot of debt in order to boost your returns. And this is a transaction often known as the leveraged buyout. It is many a young investment banker's dream to break into private equity. And the field is extremely hard to enter into because they typically only hire from people who have previous investment banking or top management consulting experience at McKinsey, Bain, or BCG. The compensation in private equity is extremely attractive. Usually after two years in banking, you'll be offered total compensation in private equity anywhere from 250K to 400K. And your pay just increasingly rapidly grows as you become more senior. And so compensation is a huge reason why a lot of people really want to break into private equity. Finally, at number one, we have the almighty hedge fund. And in hedge funds, you're investing large amounts of capital into public companies through a wide variety of different strategies. They can entail anything from long only to long short, to fundamental research, to algorithmic trading. There's a ton of different strategies and a lot of people in finance want to break into hedge funds, but it's one of the toughest fields to break into just overall. I wouldn't say just in finance, I would say overall in general. Going into our ratings, while I wouldn't necessarily say that everyone in the finance world wants to work at a hedge fund, I would say that most people do respect people who work at hedge funds the most in a sense, just because the industry is so selective and so tough. And there's really a, an up or out kind of policy where if you're not performing, you could get kicked out kind of right away. And so hedge funds typically hire the smartest people in finance, and they can include anywhere from the best software engineers if they're more like algorith algorithmic in their kind of trading strategy, or people who previously worked at investment banks or also private equity. And so the number two, and also one of the hardest fields to get into is kind of a prerequisite to also work at a hedge fund. Um, not 100% necessarily that you have to work in private equity to get into a hedge fund, but your chances become much higher and people do make that move. Um, 
But to be clear, a lot of people want to stay in private equity and never want to work at a hedge fund. So really, it depends on what you want to do. But I would say that in terms of reputation and in terms of how hard it is to break in, hedge funds are the hardest in the finance world. Lastly, because it is so hard to break into hedge funds, compensation typically tends to be the highest, usually at a minimum of 300K if you end up joining a fund after a few years in banking or private equity. And it can go anywhere into the millions pretty quickly, especially if that fund has good performance. So that concludes our rankings, but here is a list that you can check out in order to just compare all the different industries against one another. Let me know down in the comments if you disagree with anything. As a friendly reminder, this is just one man's opinion, and I really, really am not trying to look down on any given industry industry, just want to provide a perspective of what people kind of say or see in the finance world. If you're interested in recruiting for investment banking, I am building out a how to get into investment banking course. Feel free to use my Google form link down in the description to sign up. I'm giving away huge discounts to people who sign up early. I also wanted to give you guys a friendly reminder about Wall Street Prep. If you really want to learn more about how to build financial models or you want to learn about accounting or, you know, just check out a bunch of the different courses they have, use my link Rare Liquid. You get 20% off of any course highly highly recommend them and with that said thank you all so much for watching the video hope to catch you in the next one thanks so much and peace out